As a sub, just on that point, <coughs> the re resilience factor, you know, when someone is insulting you, mm -hmm. you know, or insulting, you know, let's n not even bring God or yes. the Prophet in it, but as an individual. Yes, yes. Surely Islam is one of the mm -hmm. teachings is that mm -hmm. you don't resort or you don't lower yourself to the same level. Exactly. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things is when, for example, if you dislike the company you're in, you remove yourself from that company, mm. remove yourself. And, the, yes. you know, the ultimate thing you can do for someone is just pray for their guidance. I mean, yes. and this was, of course, the way of the prophets. This, this was exactly his way. So, I mean, I take this as the basic principle of the Quran. Uh, how we should, uh, what should be our attitude, which he's asking, what should be our attitude for those whom we may reject as being false? So, the prophet's attitude toward those who he rejected as false in Mecca was respectful. I have never seen any tradition, historical or non-historical, whether it's made up or not, where he, you see his, he's using abusive words toward any of the Meccan leaders or any other spiritual leader as understood at that time that he came in confrontation with, he came in, in, in debate or dialogue with. And he, he would debate with them, he would discuss with them, he would point out their faults and flaws, but he would never abuse them, he would never insult them. Why? because he always was <coughs> attempting to win over the hearts. Uh, as Amadis, we know very clearly, once you abuse me, as you say, my senses are aroused, mm -hmm. I can never find uh, the way you're trying to lead me toward, because I now want to fight back, or I, I feel myself rejected and I want to move away from you. Of course. This cannot be the attitude of a true Muslim. He wants to win the heart, and through the mind also, by respecting the people being uh, in, in their attitude toward them, if not you accept them in terms of their beliefs, you must accept them as a human being and love them and treat them kindly. And this is the way eventually you can break down that falsehood they may be under. In the home, um, what they're on. Dr. Zaitsov, if I could bring you in here as well. In terms of, you know, the particular question um, which has also been asked, I think he, he was also referring to the fact that other Muslims sometimes refer to Hazrat Masiyamo, the promised Messiah, in derogatory terms. I mean, there's a message in there for them, which is already, as mm -hmm. Asaf has given, go to the Quran, <coughs> that tells you what the way was, what the Holy Prophet, indeed his ways, instructed you. But from this context, what should be the reaction of an Amdi Muslim when he hears these things against who we believe, obviously, to be the promised Messiah? Obviously, our, our, our feelings are, are hurt uh, when, when such remarks are made regarding Hazrat Masih and for the Holy Prophet وسلم, more so than for anybody else. But uh, our attitude and our training is such that we of course do not lower ourselves to that same degree. We do not retaliate in any respect. We do not revile them or revile their leaders. Um, and the Jamaat's motto is above all, love for all, hatred for none. But we certainly do try to educate them and say that uh, whatever uh, claims that you are making, these are not correct. And uh, the truth and the teachings of the Jamaat Ahmadiyya are portrayed to them by way of pen, by way of argument, by way of meetings. So that we uh, try to make sure that they are aware that whatever they have been taught um, or whitewashed or brainwashed is, is not quite true. And, and therefore, this is always our retort, that we will always respond in that same respect. And we have seen the response of the Jamaat when the Danish cartoons, for instance, mm -hmm. were, were published. Mm -hmm. Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi gave illuminating Friday sermons on this subject. And in fact, the book has now been published both, both in Urdu and in English and maybe in other languages. And this is out there for people to be able to educate themselves that this is the response of how the how Muslims react when something like that is said against their leaders and the Jamaat has defended the honor and the name of all all prophets of Allah mm -hmm. not only that but in England the Jamaat has also defended instances when the, the media have said things against uh, Hazrat Isa alayhi salam this is something that obviously the media um, are always trying to do and it has only been the Jamaat which has stood by and said look this is a prophet of Allah we, we, we respect him we honor him and whatever this has uh, been done by the, the media here uh, this is not correct and we have tried to educate them in that respect as well. Just as a final point on that I think 
Doc Saab touched on the, Swed uh, the Danish cartoons. Indeed, more recently, the same cartoons, I believe, in Sweden were reappeared in newspapers, etc. And from a Jamaat response, what is the response which should be outlined to other Muslims as well? Because we see, unfortunately, in our media age, burning books, fatwas being declared against these individuals, the proprietors of the newspapers. Surely that's not the Islamic response. Of course it's not. And uh, basically what uh, Muslims should remember is that anything they do on the public uh, scene is going to be taken to be part of Islam. Of course. And so they're going to give a bad name to Islam. This is a golden opportunity actually for Muslims to show a higher level of civilization. And they should show, as uh, my uh, uh, distinguished colleagues have said here, uh, that we're not going to lower ourselves to that same you know, level. We should show that if you behave like that towards those whom we love and, and uh, whom we, we revere, uh, we're going to uh, educate the world and show the world that actually the people you are reviling are the best people of mankind. And this is their character and this is their life. And now, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself for doing that. So this should be the reasoned and measured response that should come from Muslims, from true Muslims. And they shouldn't uh, give uh, the, the enemies of Islam another opportunity to attack Islam and say, well, look at the violence in Islam, look at that response, you know. But that's not Islamic and it's not civilized. So this is the response that they should show. And the laws of countries provide the parameters to do just that? Exactly. So they should, of course, take uh, advantage of the, of the laws, in particular in the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, they could give a, a response, a measured and beautiful response, which would make those very people who are reviling the Holy Prophet Muhammad or other figures of Islam, make them ashamed. And they themselves will apologize, and it's, it's on record that some have actually said that we, we really didn't know. Mm -hmm. And now we've heard you, now we, we've learned things, and we didn't know that uh, you know, the, the Holy Prophet of Islam was such a beautiful personage. Mm -hmm. And so they refrain from doing it in the in future. Okay. Well, Muhammad Saba, I think we've uh, answered your question. Lead by example, but better still, lead by the example of the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the guidance in the Quran. You heard the verse, it's there very much. Uh, to take forward and I'd suggest share that with some of your other non uh, and the Muslim friends as well for the approach they should be taking.